on this episode of Science. Welcome to science. My name is Nate Macon and I'm a physics teacher at Skyview High School. But today, we're coming to you from the Vancouver Regional Library for a demonstration of gravity and engineering. Sir Isaac Newton used an apple to explain gravity. Over at Peter S. Ogden Elementary School, the fifth graders raise the stakes. They're using the incredible edible egg. Librarian Ruth Schaefer came up with the idea. I was standing on our uh, fifth floor roof terrace and thought it would be really fun to throw something off. She contacted teacher Carol Patrick, who, along with Ogden's other fifth grade teachers, threw down the challenge to her students. Take an egg, toss it from a balcony, and make sure it doesn't break. But instead of the outside terrace, it's an indoor overhang. Either way, it's a tall order. Here are the supplies the kids could use. Two plastic drinking cups, a garbage bag, tongue depressors, cotton balls, a little bit of bubble wrap, 24 inches of tape, and some straws. The controlled variables of the experiment were that every group had the same materials, and they were also dropping from the same height. The kids arrived on buses and quickly got down to business. They only had a short time before the library opened. very fast. As most of the students gathered around the landing zone, the team leaders headed up to the second story landing and prepared to drop their egg vessels. And they were surprised to see how high up they were. All of a you're trying to land it right there on the floor. I'll stand here right next to you. If you fall over, I'll catch you. All Students opened up their cups. Wait a minute. Let's back up. Before the students got here, they started here with a simple design on graph paper. No. Wait a minute. I don't think I've backed up far enough. Now, before the students could even design their egg vessel, they had to understand the aerodynamic concepts at play. The first was gravity. No matter what the weight of an object, it'll, um, if you take this paper and, um, that, and uh, that bench um, it, and drop them at the same time, they'll both, fall at the same t they'll both fall at the same rate. Gravity is very interesting. It can either just drop straight on the ground and break, or it can float like zigzag sometimes, just like, like an airplane. <laughs> Gravity was not, only, not the only force. There was also um, lift and drag acting on our group's design. Now I think we all know what would happen if I were to take an egg, or anything really, and toss it over this ledge. Splat, right? So the real question is, what can be done to stop what we would all know would happen to the unprotected egg? We all know that gravity is the force that pulls, but what about the force that slows? As you'll see, the fifth graders in this experiment all exploit the drag force, a pressure due to air friction, which we'll talk about more in a minute. The students couldn't have a better teacher for aerodynamics than Miss Patrick, who was an aerospace engineer before getting into teaching. Her previous job included testing jet turbines to see which designs worked best. Um, so we had some uh, turbojets that didn't work. They were, we called them bad actors. And so why was it not um, succeeding on one, one uh, turbojet versus another? So, so we had those same similar difficulties that these students were encountering in real, real life situation. That trial and error process was a big part of this project. The students made a first design and tested it out at school. 
Well, from our class, the first time we went off the roof, only two survived. Then, using the results of the first drop, a redesign. The questions I asked were, why did you design it the way you designed it? Um, why did you change the things that you changed from your first design to the second? One group had a successful first attempt, but still tried to improve their container. Uh, we tried to reduce the shock of the egg, and though it did reduce it, the cup fell over, which made the egg fall out and crack. They learned a lot from that, so um, uh, it, to me that's what uh, learning is all about, that's what engineering is all about. And in the end, most groups came to similar designs. We decided to keep it simple. We'd put the cups together and um, basically put as much insulation um, around the egg as we can and then put a parachute to soften its landing. Okay, so now we're all caught up. But before we see the results of the students' designs, let's see today's famous scientist. It's a guy who knew a little something about flight. Today's famous scientist is Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, wrong Leonardo. No, not that one either. That's better. When you hear that name, you may think of the Mona Lisa or the Last Supper. But da Vinci was way more than an artist. He was a master scientist. To da Vinci, science was art and vice versa. His extensive studies into the nature of light and anatomy gave his paintings incredible realism. He was also one of the world's leading cartographers in a time when maps, especially accurate ones, were extremely rare. Many of da Vinci's ideas were cutting edge for the 16th century, still others were cutting edge for the 20th century and beyond. The technology and materials of his time, the early 1500s, made many of his inventions impossible to construct. Here's just a few. Da Vinci engineered a single span bridge that was so advanced, the Turkish Sultan he designed it for refused to build it. He didn't think it was physically possible. The Sultan was wrong and the bridge was built in 2006. Perhaps his most futuristic work was in aerodynamics. Inspired by birds, Leonardo designed a helicopter, a parachute, a hindglider, and mechanical wings. From the sky to the sea, one of da Vinci's most impressive inventions was a scuba suit made from leather with an air supply built from bamboo and cork. But da Vinci didn't want anybody to use the scuba suit, you see, because he didn't want them used by people with evil intentions. In fact, a number of da Vinci's most impressive ideas remained hidden until 165 years after his death, when his journals were made public. That writing you see, that's backwards cursive. Da Vinci was left-handed. A number of his concepts and inventions would later be duplicated by other innovators who learned they were beaten to the punch decades earlier. A man ahead of his time, Leonardo da Vinci was one of the greatest scientists the world has ever known. Oh, and he painted some stuff too. Okay, enough stalling. Let's see how many eggs we can splatter. Um. I mean, avoid cracking. The second story, where the kids were dropping from is labeled children because it's where the kids' books are held. And it's appropriate, because this one story dropped seemed like child's play. Not a single egg broke due to the resistive force we call drag. Drag is the result of the molecules in the air being pushed on by the parachute. The molecules get in the way of the parachute falling freely, and therefore act as the brakes that slow the egg's descent to the ground. If you notice, not a single project was accelerating towards the ground the way we think it should. 
and that is because the drag force was canceling a large portion of the gravitational force. So Ms. Patrick decides to bump it up. One from each class up and the next one up. Now they're dropping from the third floor, labeled nonfiction. That name is also appropriate because this thing just got real. That third floor drop is a doozy. They say that in order to make an omelet, you've got to break a few eggs. But today, it looks like we're eating Captain Crunch because the kids managed to keep all their eggs intact. You'd think that after a tough challenge like this, the kids would be fried, their brains all scrambled. But these young engineers are hard boiled. They avoided shell shock, they planned their cartons perfectly, and got exactly the result they were looking for. And now that I'm done making terrible egg jokes, here's today's point. The point of this exercise is that the kids want to be challenged. You saw their teacher give them advanced concepts and a difficult task, and these fifth graders accepted the challenge. And even when it wasn't working for them, they stuck with it and found success. The trial and error approach that they learned will help them through school, careers, and life. And that's the point. And now it's time for today's mailbag, where viewers get to ask me questions. Ashley writes, Mr. Macon, in the last episode of Science, you were nearly defeated by a fishing line. That must have been embarrassing. Hey Ashley, that isn't a question. But yes, if you saw the last episode, I had an unfortunate incident with a tangled fishing line. But I got it straightened out. It wasn't embarrassing, and here's why. It's a little known fact, but Albert Einstein himself only got into quantum physics after failing spectacularly in the string industry. He helped unravel the origins of the universe, but he couldn't tie his own shoes. Fact. Einstein was notorious for eating bow tie pasta because at age 32, he nearly choked to death on spaghetti. Fact. Albert Einstein only let his hair stick out like that because he was too afraid to try to comb out all of the rat's nests in there. And that too is a fact. And if you have a question for me, send me an email. The address is scienceshow at vansd.org. If it's a good one, I might just answer it on an episode. Well, we're about out of time. Seriously? I want to thank Carol Patrick her fellow fifth grade teachers at Ogden, and all of the students. I also want to thank the Vancouver Regional Library for letting us in, despite my many overdue book fees. Thanks for watching Science. I'm Nate Macon. Boy, you could really hawk a loogie from up here. First we took a cup, and we put cotton balls on the bottom, and we stuck sticks on the sides. Then we put bubble wrap on the bottom, then we put the egg inside, then we put bubble wrap over it, then we put the straws on the bubble wrap, and then we attach the parachute with strings to the straws, and then we drop it. <laughs>